trusting you. And if I'm being honest, I know you. Though you've said you got it, no, it's not easy letting go and trusting you. So I will stop. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. What a pleasure it is to be with you today on Martin Luther King Day. Today is a day where we remember Martin Luther King when he, in his birthday, the great man who gave the speech, I have a dream. So in, re, in remembrance of, of Martin Luther King and, and all the great things he did as a, as a activist, uh, to come against segregation, but also a preacher because he, he held most of his uh, meetings in churches. So we're going to do this in remembrance of him, and we are going to have a teaching today on dreams. We're going to talk about dreams for a little bit. We're going to talk about some different people that had dreams in the Bible and the significant implication of what dreams are and what they are for so we're going to talk a little bit about this today. We are going to pick up on the book of Hosea tomorrow. We only have, I think, three chapters left in Hosea to finish, and we will get to that tomorrow. But today we are going to talk about dreams. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the word. Let it go forth unhindered, unchecked by any satanic or outside force. God, let the spiritual seed be sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotions, transforming us by the renewing of our mind conforming us into the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, the first part I want to start with is we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, and I want to get a basis first before we dive into this lesson where we study dreams. But in Acts chapter 2, and we're going to read, we'll start in verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaiden will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before, the great, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. So one of these prophecies in Joel chapter 2, and we can flip back to Joel chapter 2 to read it out of the Old Testament also. So if we want to go to Joel chapter 2, and we're going to look in verses. Well, let's just go ahead and read. Let's read just verse 28. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Now, 
the most amazing part is this prophetic prophecy from Joel, which is what happened at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out and, and, the, and the disciples and everybody that was in the upper room was baptized by the fire of God and the Holy Spirit came on and they spoke with tongues. This is still available today. If you have never heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then take our BSM Discipleship Curriculum. This is our second, third, and fourth week where we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about tongues, and we talk about the gifts of the Spirit. So I have three weeks, which is three hours plus of teaching just on that. So you want to make sure that you get into our level one class. But I want you to see that this is what we're living in. We're living in the last days. When God says that your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Talking about the prophetic anointing of God, the prophetic gift of God going forth and the people receiving visions from God and receiving dreams from God. Talking about God showing them of things to, that are going to come to pass, causing the people to stay faithful through the midst of great trials. So. There's two parts about dreams that I want to talk about today. One of them is God revealing his plan to his people in dreams. And the second thing I want to talk about is the way God uses dreams to communicate with people because when you're asleep, your physical body doesn't hinder the the communication between you and God. Because you see it all the time in the Old Testament. That's what we're going to look at today for this example. Is that one of the ways the Lord communicates with people is when they're asleep. So that so that the, the physical natural body is, is, is taken out of the equation and God can deal directly with your spirit and God can deal directly with your soul outside of your body because you're not awake. And we're going to look at that. So... Let's first jump over to the book of Matthew. We're going to look at a New Testament example first, and then we're going to jump to the Old Testament and look at two examples there. I just want to take a little easy day today and talk about what is happening with uh, dreams, with dreams today. Now, the birth of Jesus was on the wise when his, Mary, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and, and he called his name Jesus. So the first dream we want to talk about today is the dream that Joseph had the uh, father of Jesus. Well, not, not the father. God is the, he was born of the Holy Ghost. But the, the man that was married to Mary, that, that Mary had Jesus conceived in her womb. She had the Savior of the world living on the inside of her. She had the Son of God living on the inside of her. And, and Joseph had this moment where he's like, oh, you're pregnant. Really? You're, you're, I'm supposed to be marrying a virgin, and you're, you're pregnant. And he's, he's thinking in his head, I'll just I'll put her away privately. You know, I'll, I'll break this engagement off. I'll, I'll, I'll send her away. I won't do it openly. You know, I won't, I won't put her out. Because normally what would happen is if, if, if I'm supposed to marry you, you're supposed to be a virgin, find out you're with child, then you're, when you're put away, everybody knows that you played the harlot. You've acted as a whore. You went and slept with somebody. 
And, and Joseph was like, I'll just put her away privately. You know, I, I won't do that. But one of these powerful encounters of the Lord happened where an angel comes to Joseph in a dream. Now, the part that is so profound about this to me is if you really just took a moment and put yourself in Joseph's shoes. You know, sometimes we read this story and we and we read what happened, but we don't we don't really take the time to meditate it or we don't take the time to really understand how Joseph must have been feeling. I mean, put yourself in his shoes. You're you were you were dating somebody and you loved them very much. You decided you were going to marry them and you got engaged to them. I mean, this is this is a very big commitment. How many people have been engaged or been married to somebody and you're I mean, you pour your heart out into this other person. You, you, you love them. You're willing to become one flesh with them. You're willing to give your life. I mean, till death do you part with this other person. And then right before you're supposed to get married, you find out she's pregnant. Like, the, the, the devastation in the heart that Joseph must have been feeling on the inside. Even when Mary's like, it's, it's God's child. Like, it, this must have been a weight to bear. If you've ever been cheated on, if you've ever had uh, a relationship where the other person slept with somebody else, and maybe maybe they maybe they got pregnant, maybe they didn't get pregnant, but just the, the heartbreak of somebody breaking a covenant vow with you, it's devastating. Some people, you know, with all things, God can restore everybody. And if you come to Him, He will heal you from that experience. But there's a lot of people outside the Lord that never recover from that. You know, it, it just devastates them. So you have to think, when, when Joseph receives this vision, think about how he must have been feeling the turmoil on the inside of him that must have been going on. Like, I, I think this is one of the most amazing things about how the Lord deals with people is dreams. Because when you're, when, when you're up and, and you're thinking about it and the devil's attacking you and, you're, and your emotions are involved and there's... You know, if you're married, there's soul ties involved, and 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 it's it's a lot of heartbreak. So God has to deal with somebody in a way that their emotions won't skew the conversation that God's about to have with them. I, I've heard so many people say, "Well, the Lord said," and the Lord didn't say it. You know, because what they're saying, God said, doesn't line up with God's words. So we know it's not God. But, but their emotions are so involved and they're so attached to whatever's going on that it's skewing their perception. So, so God dealt with Joseph in a way that God could speak to him clearly. He would know it was God and his, his emotion wouldn't be involved because he was asleep. That's a powerful thing about it, what a dream can do. A, a conversation you can have with God. And out of this comes direction from God. Not only did God bring healing in this dream, security in this dream, peace in this dream, but he also brought forth a plan on what to do next. It kept them together. I mean, that's a powerful reality of what God can do in a dream. Like I said, sometimes when we we just we we take a brief read through the word and we don't really sit to think about what must have been going through this person's you know, mind, will and emotions when they heard from God, like what must have been happening on the inside of him. But the way God dealt with him was in a dream. How powerful is that, that God's willingness to deal with people and meet them where they're at? That, that's probably the, the biggest thing I see here. I mean, there's, there's so many things we can talk about in this passage, but when we talk about dreams, we see that God met Joseph where he was at. In the dream, it's just powerful. Let's go back to uh, Genesis 37. We're just looking at dreams today. We're not doing a super, a lot of times we have real, real in-depth teachings. I just, I, I wanna look at some things. I wanna pull some points out. I'm not, I'm not going super in-depth today on some of these. But if we want to look at, well, let's look at, Genesis 37, let's just look at verse 5 to a brief, brief read. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren. 
and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, the dream which I have dreamed. And go to verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, behold, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars made obedient, or obedient, whatever that word is to me. My Bible has it split up, make it a little hard to read. Obedience, I think that's what it says. My Bible is a little hard to read on that word, but it's okay. And and one of the, you know, I I, I want to bring this this passage up because when we talk about dreams, so many people see Joseph as one of the biggest people that had a dream. So let, let's 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 talk about a couple things in this passage. One, Joseph, in his young age had a dream and and the dream gave direction for his life and that's an important point to know that this dream allowed joseph to be anchored in the lord despite the circumstances that were coming next that when he was thrown in prison and then cast in or you know he was sold to slavery cast into prison then went to potiphar's house then was thrown back in prison finally got i mean I think Joseph had this dream. How old was Joseph? 17 years old. But he, I think, what was he, 30 when he became the prime minister? He had over a decade of slavery and imprisonment that he went through. But the dream gave direction and gave hope for his life. It allowed him to be anchored in the Lord even when circumstances were... were not only unfavorable, but his circumstances were completely contrary to the dream that he had dreamed from God. So it's important to know that as Joseph and Mary, he had a dream where God dealt with him where he was at, and it gave direction to his life. You know, it, it, it taught him how to deal with the fact that she was already pregnant, but you know, he he was he didn't put her away, and then they had more kids. And then we see in, in Genesis 37 with Joseph that he had dream from God. And his dream gave direction to his life also. That, that the word of God coming into him gave him direction about what was coming next. And not only did he get this direction from God, but it allowed him to stay anchored in the Lord for the rest of his life. I mean, he, he was faithful to God. When, he, when, 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 when everybody else would have denounced or, or turned away. I mean, what the, the things that Joseph went through were hard things. But he refused to not be loyal to God. And he had heard from God in a dream. Now let's look at this, this next example. Like I said, we're not doing super, super in-depth in all these. I mean, we're just taking brief, brief glances at these passages. I recommend you go and study them yourself. I just want to show you places in the Word where it says that people had dreams. So let's look at 1 Kings. I want to go into 1 Kings. And we're going to talk about Solomon. I love this passage. So we're going to, we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to read this. I'll read a couple of verses. I'm just going to pick a few. We're not going to read all of it. But it says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And then let's, let's just read the last verse. In verse 15 it said, And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Now, let's talk about a few things real quick. Where we're going we're gonna to tie in all of these passages. We're talking about dreams today. Because Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. He had vision and purpose and direction for his life and what he was called by God to do. He, he was a preacher. He, he, was, he was called to bring forth the truth that segregation was wrong. The separation of blacks and whites in the United States should not be the case. And brought an end to it. I mean, this, 
This man said, I have a dream. He gave that amazing speech because he had direction from God. In all three of these examples in the Bible, Joseph, Joseph, and, and Solomon. I just realized we used two Josephs. But the, the first man in the Bible in Genesis 37 had a dream, had more than one dream, multiple dreams from God that gave direction to his life. But what it caused was radical obedience. That even when he was sold into slavery, even when he was uh, thrown into prison, even when he was lied on, he stayed faithful to God. And then he interpreted the dreams in prison and then interpreted Pharaoh's dream. He had, he, had, he had the ability not only to hear from God and to know things in dreams, but the ability to understand and to perceive and even interpret other people's dreams. And he became the prime minister of Egypt. For, for 13 years of his life was in prison and slavery until he became the prime minister of Egypt, before the, the actual full manifestation of what God had shown him at 17 came to pass. That's powerful. He, this man stayed faithful for a very... How many people today stay faithful to God and what God has shown them? You know, some people might stay faithful for a year, two years. What about five, 10, 13 years and you still haven't seen your promise and every one of your circumstances are against what God has showed you? Do you stay faithful? The other Joseph in the Bible, in the, in, the, in the New Testament, imagine what he's feeling in the moment when he finds out his spouse, in the natural sense, what a natural person would understand is that they committed harlotry and, walk, and walked in whoredom. And now I'm going to have to break my engagement off. But it does say that he didn't want to make a show of her openly or do it publicly. That part you should understand because the fact that he didn't want to do that showed that he still had deep emotion for her even though the circumstance in the natural looked as though she played the harlot. Now we know it was from God because God spoke to Joseph. God spoke to Mary too and brought forth Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Son of Man, the Bridegroom, King, and Judge, the man Christ Jesus, our Bridegroom. But, but God dealt with Joseph in a dream and it gave him direction. It allowed him to walk with God in a specific way. And then Solomon had a dream with God, had a communication with God in a dream. And, and, this, and this communication brought forth the wisest man. Nobody before him and nobody after him would be wiser than Solomon. It's the wisest man that ever lived. And, and what I want you to see that came from this dream, I love this. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. The immediate response of Solomon when he awoke was to worship God. I want you to see that in, in Joseph's life in the Old Testament, it was radical obedience and, 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 and offering himself to the Lord. Joseph in the New Testament, radical obedience and offering himself unto the Lord to be a vessel. Solomon, after he has a drink, radical obedience. And it was a sacrifice. The very first thing that Solomon thought about was, I just heard from God. You know what's going to be the best thing I can do right now? Let me go ahead and make an offering to God. In the, book of, in the book of Joel, it prophesies that in the latter days, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And at, and at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out. And this gift of being able to, to have direction from God in dreams and, 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 and to hear from God and, and, and to be blessed of the Lord through dreams, the, the purpose is radical obedience to God. That's the part I want you to see that when you were, people are like, I just want to dream from God. I just want to see, but, but they, they want, they want to know things and they want to see things from God, but then they, they may or may not obey. I want you to know when you see a dream from God, 
it will produce radical obedience, radical sacrifice. You're willing to lay yourself on that altar and say, God, I am your vessel. Use me. Here I am. Use me. And that cry out to God is where God will speak to you. So many people are begging God to speak to him in dreams, but they're not, they're not going to obey if they heard. There's no obedience. There's no willingness to obey. But the people that are willing to lay themselves down, be a vessel, and obey God, they'll hear from God. And this purpose and direction will come forth, and God will direct your life. We're out of time today, so let me pray. Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Thank you for the word gone forth today. I pray everybody under the sound of my voice receives dreams, vision, wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son, God, as you guide our life, produce radical and wholehearted obedience to you. We love you and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. One last thing before we finish. If you are in our discipleship class, we have class tonight at 7 p.m. It is topic number one, salvation. So please make sure you have your homework done and we will see you tonight at 7 p.m. for class. Other than that, we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Church, have a wonderful day today. Take me away.